Uh, good evening. So uh, tonight, I'm uh, going to take it up a level and really follow on from what Patrick was saying about some of the themes and the trends that we're seeing uh, with the major vendors in financial services and also the newest of fintechs uh, that are coming uh, into uh, financial services and delivering very specialized applications. So first of all, there's a world of unbundling that's actually taking place. And we've seen this in our homes, it's very, very clear that I no longer need to buy an album and listen, you know, uh, as one package, I can listen to individual tracks on uh, Spotify or Apple iTunes, whatever it may be. Very similarly, I don't need to buy a big cable package anymore. I can buy something much more bespoke. I can pick and choose what I want. I can really build a best of breed uh, in my own personal life. We're seeing the same happen in financial services on desktops. So gone are, or fast becoming gone, are the highly monolithic applications that have really taken up so much space on desktops, where you know, it may well be that just 20% of the functionality is used, but the user is certainly paying for 100% of the price. What we're seeing is that these big, large applications are really turning into more kind of widgets. They're like unbundling into these small, very specialized applications that are highly mobile on uh, desktops. And widgets, which is a really weird word, but are super powerful. They're really, really, really powerful. And we were thinking about this a lot, and actually I, I wrote a blog very recently about this, and this kind of summarizes it a little bit. And that it really unlocks just so much value for end users and also for the company or the application builder who's built uh, you know, that particular widget. You essentially get an unbundling of applications. You get to essentially undistort demand. Figure out what your users actually want to use and you know, build and improve that particular area. Figure out what's redundant in the application that you don't need anymore or that you need to rethink and reinvigorate to get traction with that user base and a higher level of adoption of your application. Very similarly, if you do this, and we're not kind of going for this massive product on somebody's desktop, you're actually going to find like new markets. You're going, to un you're going to find untapped users that didn't buy the product before, but now will, because they're going to buy this very, very specialized widget of information, which is super impactful completely, to Patrick's point. Didn't coordinate that at all, by the way, but it's an awesome presentation. And you know, with that, you, you, you start to kind of unconstrain supply uh, in a really interesting way, which means that as a user, you can really start to build a kind of best of breed you know, very, very easily on your desktop. Um, and I, you know, I don't need to be tied into that one large application anymore. And um, yeah, there's a lot of symmetry here with like, things like micro, microservices and so on as well. Just very, very you know, specialized services, very, very specialized kind of widgets on a desktop. Now, if we do this and we have this kind of best of breed, well, if I have all like individual specialized apps, I still need them to work together, right? So you, you actually can completely redefine you know, what the business process is. Um, by having this message bus, Patrick talked, and it comes out of the box with OpenFIM runtime on your desktop, um, you can start to configure and think about workflow automation of how you move between these different applications in a really, really, really smart way. Now, if I do that, I actually start to empower uh, and reinvigorate existing applications because I start to complement them with other apps that kind of make up an ecosystem uh, and, and makes things just much more powerful, really enriches existing applications also. And then finally, um, it has the effect of creating new networks. These ecosystems breed new networks. And if you're a vendor or a bank builder or a buy-side builder, you can be part of that, that new world uh, and enjoy the benefits and the hyperscale that gets delivered from that. Super powerful. But there is a problem. And that is, if the world is moving to lots of widgets, our screens are going to start looking like this. We're going to have 
you know, a bunch of internal applications and, and widgets floating around on our desktop. We're going to have a bunch of external applications that are all floating around on our, on our desktop in, in the form of widgets. And we need to think about how we bring these together. We need to make sure we're controlling the problem of fragmentation on a desktop. So what does this mean? So we really want to see a unified experience on that desktop. We want to see a unified workspace so that my different widgets snap and dock together. I can save and restore the layouts and whatever it may be. I also need my workflow uh, from app one to app two to be able to talk uh, to each other, to know how to communicate um, in the right way. But of course, you know, these builders are going to be different people. So how do we make sure that they actually, you know, there's something that is unifying these things together, uh, creating a standard that everybody knows they're operating on, that means regardless of the app you're building, deploying to whatever user, it's going to work. It's going to work because there's already one underlying OS there that is unifying this whole experience. And that is why at OpenFin, we've been so focused around delivering our layout service, which takes care of the snapping and docking, whatever that application it may be, and also the message bus that comes out of the box with OpenFin alongside the FTC3 service. I think most people in the room will be familiar with FTC3. If you're not, uh, FTC3 stands for Financial Desktop Connectivity Collaboration Consortium. Um, it uh, started just one year ago, has well over 50 members. Uh, it's actually the most active project under FinOS right now. So OpenFin established this one year ago. Uh, we contributed the project into FinOS. Um, and today is the most active open source project under FinOS. Super powerful. Um, fantastic to have partners like FactSet, leading some working streams, Thomson Reuters, uh, major banks, major buy sites, all contributing to a world where applications have a common messaging standard to know how to communicate with each other. But of course, there needs to be one bus, and we need to know how to connect to that bus, and there's really no point in us having multiple buses on the desktop, because that's just not going to work. Just like if we all start building different snapping and docking, it's just not going to work. So the good news is the standard is here. You guys in the room have been super helpful to us. Uh, at OpenFin, and today we've got over a thousand applications running on OpenFin. Um, 1,500 end banks and buy side firms who uh, have OpenFin runtime, a uh, unique firm, sorry, who have OpenFin runtime on their desktop uh, in over 60 countries, and crucially, uh, closing in very rapidly on 200,000 desktops which is up a staggering 200% year on year. So it's here. The base is here for the OS. You don't need to do anything else. The message bus is here. The standard is here. The snap and dock is here. Thank you very much. <laughs>